Hey everybody, I almost forgot to turn the camera on. I've been so um, out of it lately. What I have done here is took a piece of plain card stock. It happened to be a pad I got at Target. And I painted it <clears throat> with Waverly Chalk Ink. And the color is ink. There's something in this particular formulation that's different than other chalk paints and it works great with Silver Point, which we're going to try to use on this. So, one coat. It did a beautiful job of covering it. Then what I did was I came back with, and that was yesterday, so it was good and dry, came back with Radiant Rain Periwinkle. And um, just sprayed it and just let the drops fall where they wanted to fall. Okay, here we go. I took the solution by Color Art Primary Elements Violet Pearl. I have a handy dandy little spoon here. I have no idea how much to use, so we're going to do about three. I put the lid back on. Trust me, if there's any way for the wind to blow through and knock one over, it'll happen. Okay, and I put the little lid on. Now all you do to use this, is pop it in like that. And turn on my compressor. Now what I want Okay. I forgot to turn the camera on, so you miss seeing primary, um, not primary elements, Twinkling H2O Siam White mixed with a little water, and I sprayed a moon, which not only gave me the white circle for the moon, but gave me a little white overspray on top of the periwinkle. So, while we're watching this, I'm just going to say that this holiday hop is a video giveaway utilizing color art products from colorart.com. We will randomly choose a winner from each participating channel to win the new Primary Element six piece shaker set. <coughs> Excuse me, with the solution medium. Comments are considered entries. Go to the video description box and click on show more to see the contest rules. Then click on the first link in the description box to travel to the next the next artist. I'm not reading well. Anyway, um, and then like them and then after it's over on the date, we'll be picking a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Said so this is from the days of Leonardo. Back to the 1400s before there was graphite pencil lead. <clears throat> and this is just in a regular pencil holder. I think you saw this, but we're going to see it again anyway. There's the silver. And then with time it tarnishes, turns a little brownish, oxidizes. And we're going to come in here and I'm going to fill this silhouette in with the silver point. You can begin to see it. I'll go over it until the paper won't take any more silver off the wire. And when I come back tomorrow, we'll have that part done. Let me show you where we are, or where I am. Unexpected surprises. You just gotta love them. See if I can get the glare just right. When you look at this, I'm come in... And I'm at a disadvantage because I can't see this because I'm looking straight up into an overhead light from the camera. When you look at it from the front, it almost looks like there's not much there. But look what happens when you turn it. The mica... Oops, what was that? That was my silver point pencil. Look. Look, isn't that cool? It's like a hologram. Hologram, whatever. And then you turn it this way and you can't even see it. There's the silver. Look. 
Anyway, <clears throat> I could sit and look at that all day. I gotta show you this while I'm doing it. This is just a piece of paper that came in some packaging. I want to get a rough idea of my scale. And the size of my Santa and his sleigh would tell me that they're a little bit closer to me. So I could, I could make my bigger trees three inches, three and a half. Now if Santa was smaller, that would mean he was further away and my trees more than likely would be smaller. Um, just a, I mean, that's not even really important, but that's the way a designer's head works. So if I aim for about a three, and if this paper is the correct size, then that's my working area. Okay. I like this one for the far right. Here's why. This one will be just a little bit bigger than some of these others, and then I'll have... If this one's three and a half inches, I might have the one on the right hand side be three inches. And the reason for that is that designers are trained, and this is an, an old, old, old rule of thumb, based in science, of course. Because we read from right to left in the Western world, in the Eastern world you read from right to left, but we read here. So typically, our eye enters the page from the upper right corner. In my little world, most of my paintings have the light coming from the upper right-hand corner. Not a biggie, but it's just kind of one of my core values. So, I will design this too with the light, as it were, coming from here. But when I get to the right-hand edge of the painting, or, the, or whatever it is, I want something over here to direct your eye. Pretend you were in a gallery and these were all framed. Side by side, lined up. If I have something pointing out that side of the canvas and it's delineated and it's very plain and clear and crisp and hard edge and all that, somebody's going to be likely to walk into this, walk across and go straight to the next painting. So what I always want to do is, number one, make this bigger on this side, which will stop the eye somewhat. And if I can, I want to have something to circle their eye back. And this little tree works well because it has motion and it's also going up into the curving up to the right. And so that's going to be my stopper. Don't ask me why I roll the way I do because I can't totally explain it. I probably could if I thought about it. Okay, so you're going to make me think about it. All right. Because I grabbed for an iridescent white that had the purplish cast and the silver has silver cast. <laughs> um, I'm going to stick with cool colors. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I can repeat two of them. Alright, just jump in. I talk to myself all the time in the studio, so I'm really not talking to you. It may feel like I am. I am talking to myself. That's a perfect color. Level surface, and we're going to leave it to dry. Alrighty, see if I can do this so you can see it. Okay, there's pretty much straight on. I'm going to tilt it. I'm not seeing the trees. There are the trees. There are the trees. Look, and then they disappear. So this is Holographic Santa. Hope you enjoyed the process. It's simple and I traced wherever I could to save time. I know I can draw that stuff, but I just didn't feel like doing it because I only had 10 minutes. Alright, hope you enjoyed the video. And